I would like to, on this video, continue talking about the advent of our Lord, the birth of our Lord, and also his early life. And we've been going through different texts in the Hebrew and the Greek. I would like to look at Hosea 11.1 1 on this video. And it is interesting that Matthew uses that and applies it to Jesus Christ. When you look at Hosea 11.1, 1, it is looking at how God called Israel out of Egypt and how he cared for her and brought her from Egypt and uh, how that he was ministering to Israel all the way through in that great deliverance. This is then applied by Matthew, talking about how Jesus came out of Egypt. And I believe Jesus is viewed as the final Israel in the mind of Matthew. And so I'm going to read the Hebrew, and then we'll look at basic vocabulary. And then a commentary, Hebrew analysis with commentary. And finally, uh, an application seen through the lenses of Matthew. It reads, Ki na'ar Yisrael v'ohavehu u'mimitzrayim karati livni. That is, when Israel was a child. I loved her, I loved him, and from Egypt I called my son. I loved him, is the way I should render that. Notice, as we look at the uh, vocabulary, we have key here, uh, when, followed by na'ar, a noun meaning a child or lad, Yisrael, a proper noun, meaning Israel, the is your conjunction and, ahab is the verb to love, and men is your preposition, Mitzrayim means Egypt, kara means to call, le is the inseparable preposition to or for, and ben is the noun meaning son. And so as we read each phrase, it reads as follows. Ki na'ar Yisrael havehu. When Israel was a, a child, I loved him. Notice key here is the adverb when, followed by na'ar, the noun meaning child. So when a child, Yisrael, uh, Yisrael is just your proper name for Israel, followed by ve'ohavehu. Notice the vav here is your conjunction and, and then ohavehu, is from the root ahav, to love. Notice it's the cow imperfect, first common singular, with a third masculine singular pronominal suffix from the root ahav. And it means I love. Notice here that we have a vav consecutive. And it is what we call a pay aleph verb. And it really, in all of these pay aleph verbs, the O vowel is what you find uh, first of all. The O he va. In other words, the O ha vehu. What you have here is the holum. And that commonly happens in what is called the pay aleph verbs, where in the pay position, we begin with an olive. So we would render it, and it always prefers that O vowel in these particular type verbs. Uh, like Vayomer, 
and God said. There we have that oval from Amar, the same uh, kind of construction. So we would render it, when Israel was a lad or a child, I loved him. U mimitzrayim, and from Egypt, karati, I called. Notice U here is the conjunction and, and notice men here is the preposition, but the noon of the men has assimilated into the mem of Mitzrayim. And we have a doggish forte because we have a progressive assimilation of the noon into the mem. The mem. So men Mitzrayim became mem Mitzrayim. That is from Egypt, I have then called, notice karati is from the root kara, to call. It is a cow perfect, first common singular, notice the e or the t, giving it away in that suffix as a first uh, person common singular. And so we would render it, uh, I called, that is from Egypt, I called, two or four my sons, live me. We have the preposition two or four, and then we have beni, which means my son. Notice we have the noun masculine singular with the pronominal suffix first common singular in the e. So we would render it four or two my son. So in translation, when Israel was a child, I loved him and I called him out of Egypt for my son, to be my son. Now when we look at the interpretation and then the application in the New Testament, we know that this is speaking about how God, how the Lord delivered Israel out of Egypt how that he was like a father to her, to, to Israel. He cared for Israel. He loved Israel. And when Israel was a child, he took care of him, even as he was learning to walk and brought him forth from Egypt. This is what Hosea is going back to. And so the text becomes a type, I believe, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Israel is called out of Egypt, just like later Jesus is called out of Egypt and will become the final Israel. Uh, and he is the ultimate fulfillment of this. And so the text has a deeper level than just only Israel being called out of Egypt, but appointing ultimately to Christ who came out of Egypt as the final, ultimate realization of Israel. And we are told in verse 14 of chapter 2 that Joseph arose and took the child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And he was there until the death of Herod in order that what was spoken by the Lord might be fulfilled out of Egypt have I called my son. So what is striking here, all of this happened in order to fulfill by way of illustration and fulfillment, by way of type, anti-type, what happened with Jesus. So Matthew wants us again to see that the final Israel was called out of Egypt. And as a result, he becomes the perfect ideal Israel, who obeys the Father and carries out the Father's perfect will and his willingness to go to Calvary to provide a divine sacrifice for sins, to conquer death, and is now at the right hand of God the Father. And all who believe in him as Lord and Savior become, we could say, spiritual Israel become part of God's spiritual people, whether Jew or Gentile, 
a bond or free, uh, male or female, anyone who puts their faith in Jesus becomes the people of the Lord. What a beautiful text. And I've often said that in, uh, can I say, rabbinic hermeneutics or interpretation, it is often said that there are different levels of interpretation in a text. You have the literal, which is the blow, the peshat. You have the remetz, which is like the hint of a text. You have the drash, which is like a commentary. And then you have the so, which is the deeper mystical level. Like out of Egypt have I called my son, I believe, can really come under possibly the hint or also the sowed, the deeper level, in that Israel becomes a type of the final Israel, that is Jesus being called out of Egypt. And so what a beautiful fulfillment, whether you want to call it type, anti-type, or sowed, that is showing a deeper level, uh, we see a fulfillment of this great text, ultimately in what Jesus accomplishes by being brought out of Egypt and then by all that he did as the obedient final Israel, the ultimate Israel in what he carried out in fulfilling the Father's perfect will. As we think of Advent and as we think of Christmas, what a beautiful, beautiful, uh, can I say, uh, fulfillment that we find in Jesus Christ, who brings us through his ultimate obedience and fulfillment as the real salvation that he alone was able to bring as the final Israel of God and his obedience to what the Lord had called him to do.